Hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's great to see you all here uh, to the first BPC Climate and Trade Summit. Uh, it's a typical day in Washington. You know, there's the NATO Summit, there's the BPC Summit, there's a heat advisory. Welcome to the summer here. Um, and I have to say, this is the main summit happening in town. We know that. Apologies to everyone trying to get around town for the NATO work. Uh, I know there's a lot of enthusiasm for that, but this is really where uh, the most exciting conversation is going to be happening today. Uh, if you're in this room, you know who the BPC is, so I will be brief on uh, that, that side of things. We're a federal, federally focused policy research and advocacy organization working on a number of different energy and climate topics from innovation to carbon capture to permitting reform. We have some farm bill work. We have some industrial decarbonization work going on. Uh, and we're very excited about this opportunity in climate and trade, which we'll be exploring more today. Um, I should just say, my name is Sasha, and I lead the energy program and have a, a whole host of my amazing team here with me, uh, which you'll be seeing a lot of and hearing from th throughout the course of the program today, which is really set up to be, I think, quite interesting. Um, you know, the linkage between climate and trade is getting more and more attention, I think, as we all appreciate in part because it's so bipartisan. Uh, it's an issue where we see Democrats and Republicans working together on legislation that gets support from industry and environmental groups. It's an issue where China hawks who care about national security, labor groups that care about US workers and employment, and climate hawks that care about emissions can all work together on a policy that can achieve multiple priorities simultaneously. And as you'll hear from many stakeholders throughout the program today, um, the, that th there, there's a lot of attraction to these frameworks from these different perspectives for entirely different reasons. And we think that makes it unique from a policy perspective, uh, and it makes it really exciting from a policy opportunity perspective. And that's what we're at the BPC really trying to um, take advantage of and leverage as we, as we walk through this issue in all of its dimensions, uh, both today and on an ongoing basis. Uh, at the BPC, as you probably know, we've been leading the way on this issue, convening a monthly working group since 2021 that has uh, really been helping to think through the details of how to effectively design a climate and trade policy that works in the service of the US strategic interests. Um, we just published a report earlier this week that you'll hear more about today. We're seeing legislative um, uh, activity um, from in the, in the House, in the Senate, on a bipartisan basis. In fact, the Prove It Act it was just introduced on a bipartisan basis yesterday. We're gonna hear more about that today, of course. The president and his administration is actively working on these issues, and we're going to hear from his advisor in just a couple of minutes on what they're doing. And you know, it's our sense here at the BPC, this is just the beginning. We're at the, we're at the beginning of, I think, a really important opportunity to shape this policy in a way that services all of these priorities that I just mentioned. And we're going to need to really lean on everybody in the stakeholder community, in this room and out there uh, on the internet that has expertise. Uh, on these topics because there's so much to be done and there's such a large opportunity here that we're really excited about. Uh, you'll hear more about some of the things that we're going to be doing going forward from just a couple of minutes. Um, and I'm really excited to welcome you all here for this conversation. There's a, a jam-packed program and I think you're gonna enjoy it. Uh, so thank you for joining us. Um, uh, I also want to thank our sponsors. Of course, we do have some sponsors that help make this event possible. The Climate Leadership Council series and the Steel Manufacturers Institute uh, Association. Thanks, thank you for your support. I also want to uh, thank Senator Coons for helping us secure this lovely room. Uh, and last but not least, I want to thank the BPC team that helped pull this together. Uh, it's really been, uh, as you can imagine, a lot of work that went into it. We have uh, it's just such a great team across our program uh, and our events team and the policy team. So thank you so much uh, for all the work that went into this. Um, and I am now going to transition over to uh, the one and only Zan Fishman. If you know him, you'll know what I mean. He's really been leading this issue, driving this issue with technical expertise, political expertise, and he's gonna serve as the MC for the rest of the afternoon. So with no further ado, let's welcome Zan. Thanks. Hey, everybody. 
So I get to be the MC today, Master of Ceremonies. Um, I don't know what kind of ceremony it's going to be. Baptism, bar mitzvah, bubbling brew, cauldron stuff. We'll see. Um, but it's an issue where there are a lot of different, diverse stakeholders aligning on the same policy agenda, which is really exciting. Um, so we're going to start today with some news. I'm announcing that BPC is launching a new advisory council on climate and trade, uh, the, the members of which are Dave Banks, uh, formerly with the National Security Council um, and now a fellow at BPC, Greg Bertelson at the Climate Leadership Council, Maureen Hinman, Silverado Policy Accelerator, Kevin Dempsey with the American Iron and Steel Institute, Joseph Mikett at uh, CSIS, Brad Markell, who used to be with AFL-CIO, um, Linda Dempsey with CF Industries, Dennis Shea, who's now at BPC, um, but formerly was deputy uh, USTR, and Jane Flagel, who's now at Stripe, but used to do industrial policy at the White House CEQ. So we're gonna hear from a lot of those council members today, and we're gonna be working with them in the coming months and years to help advance our agenda, figure out exactly where we should be focusing our analysis uh, and our education and communication efforts. 